Oh, what do we have here? Hey guys, check this out. We got us a heap of power drill screwdrivers. And here's the idea. Each one of these has got its own electric motor. That exerts a lot of energy to get the chuck to spin. And why not try and find a way to route that energy to the wheels of a car? Connect all of them to make one big engine, fit that to a car, and of course go for a drive. Let's do this. Since we still have that awesome cradle we made for the V16 chainsaw engine, we'll just modify and use it. Cut off whatever we don't need, weld on some additional plating, and then figure out how to mount the screwdrivers themselves. Here's what we've made so far. This thing does have a lot of horns, but the reason we've welded those on there is to be able to mount the screwdrivers, to be able to get them on nice and securely. We'll use some clamps to fit them to the mainframe, and each of them is going to have a second clamp securing it to its respective horn, so that it's on nice and tight. Okay, so we've put together a horny sort of frame. Time to commence the assembly. Well, let's carry on. We are using regular V-belts to transfer the torque. We didn't want to fit any additional pulleys to the chuck, instead opting to remove those entirely and replace them with pulleys. That'll free up some space. It's also just the correct way to do it. It'll get rid of any wobbles or vibrations or other sorts of unwanted movements that could have manifested if we'd have left the chucks on. We're machining the pulleys ourselves using a lathe, and they are made from aluminum to make them lighter and to remove uh, some load from the motors, for them to spin more freely. Probably the most difficult part in all of this is to synchronize all 50 of these drills. We are going to dismantle all 50 of them, they each contain a chip, a control transistor, and so this is what gets it to turn on. We want to make it so that all 50 are activated with a single button. The shaft we used as a crankshaft for the V16 fits this application perfectly, and so that's what we'll be using. It's got all the durability we need, and we shouldn't have any problems with installation. Now we just need to make some pulleys to match the ones we have on the screwdrivers and fit them to the shaft. We took a 25mm thick steel plate and made these pulleys out of pieces of it. They fit the shaft very well. As for how they're going to be secured, we've got some tabs for that. The shaft and these pulleys are going to interlock with each other. Back to the screwdrivers, and this has gotten a bit interesting. We have quite a lot of them, 50 units, and we're trying to figure out how to get them to work smoothly from the push of a button. We, of course, want to set up a single button to control all 50 of these, and we've been working on a system and testing it for a good week at this point. In the beginning we were using regular wires, now we've switched to screened wires. 
Also, we've been replacing these transistors, which, for whatever reason, I don't know, it could be down to the quality. Anyway, when one of these is on the chip by itself, it works just fine. But once we start tying all of this into a bundle, that's where the problems start. They just keep failing for whatever reason, which is quite unfortunate. And here's another issue we ran into. Right now we've got three of these connected, with a control on just one of them. I'm going to press the button, and everything is good, all three of them are working perfectly fine. And now I release the button, and these other two continue to run. Like, what the hell is going on there? But sometimes even weirder stuff occurs. I don't know if something is getting magnetized, but check this out. Who even knows, man? Now we... Oh, now it's not running on its own. It might be that we don't really know a lot about this sort of stuff, but we would like to figure this out. What do you guys make of this? There just has to be somebody among you guys who is well-versed when it comes to stuff like this. But we've thought about it for a bit, and we've come up with a solution of the so-called the simpler the better variety. We've decided to simplify this as much as we could. We got some wires, batteries are attached. There's no button, you do this. And off you go. No control modules or microchips or anything like that. No transistors and so on. We've found a solution. These spin up very well. We've removed all of the control boards. And the batteries are feeding the motors directly. Okay, now it's a matter of fitting these to the frame, installing the belts, putting them under tension to prevent slippage and loss of power. This all seems fairly straightforward, so let's carry on. Okay, guys, the engine is now complete. It's an enormous electric motor, but it looks so good. With the black and orange color scheme, I mean, this is just awesome. Now, there is a bit of green in there, and this is a cooling fan, but it's not necessarily performing cooling fan functions. Instead, it's sort of a rotation sensor, I guess. Okay, we are ready. I've got my wires right here. I'm going to bring them together. Here we go. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Who told me I won't get burned here? That's just on the one setting. Let's see what we get in second gear. Oh, that is very good. Now we know what the rev count is going to be. And let's not forget that we're going to be running the factory gearbox. The one that would have been mated to the stock engine. It's going to have four forward gears and one in reverse. We will figure out the gearing required to get the car to move at a decent clip. But we have put together a very interesting motor here. Don't know about you, but I really dig it. Tidy up the wiring and this should be really good. It is going to look better in the engine bay with fewer wires. But yeah, guys, this was a royal headache to put together, especially with getting them to run. But next time we're fitting this engine to a car and going out to do some testing. You guys saw it all for yourselves and uh, talk to us. Maybe you could suggest a better way for us to wire these up. And once we've completed the project, it's out to do some driving, which we'll definitely show you. Subscribe so you don't miss it. That's it for this video. Catch you guys later.